Hi, I'm Patty. I'm Kim Michelle. And I'm Jill. Welcome to our podcast. It's a great day to talk. Because honestly, what day isn't a great day to talk? So join us in our conversation. A Great Day to Talk is brought to you by St. George Design. Offering complete website design, social media management, search engine optimization, Google and Facebook ad management, and many other digital and print marketing services. StGeorgeDesign.com And by Richardson Brothers Custom Homes, third generation builders who have been building custom homes in southern Utah for over 25 years. They will take your dream home from concept to completion. Contact RichardsonBrothers.com the April Gates Group and Zion Canyon Real Estate have been specializing in helping Southern Utah clients buy and sell property for over 18 years. We can help you too. Call or text April today, 435-632-8869, 435-632-8869. Hello, all of our friend and friends <laughs> out there. <laughs> We're so happy to be here today, and we have um, missed visiting with each other and visiting with you. And um, we've got uh, the loveliest Kim Michelle right here to my left. And to the left of Kim Michelle is the loveliest Patricia. And I'm so glad that the three of us are together. We've... Um, very had far away. we yeah, it, you are very very, very far, far away, away. Mm -hmm. we've uh stepped back into our classrooms this week it's been um adventurous in that way we are also um we want to share some information and and um a story with you today that touches the three of us especially one of us very 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 closely and we want to share with you what has been happening um, you know, we've had to take a week off here and there for certain things. And we just want to bring you, our friends and listeners, into the circle, the yeah. nest, mm -hmm. and share with you what what is going on. Um, with that, we are just going to jump over to our lovely producer, Sean. And Sean, if you will go ahead and hit play, that would be great. Well, hello, friend. Um, just to start off, I'm going to ask that you stick with us through this entire video. It just might take us a few minutes to get through this. And in some ways, it may be the most challenging video we've ever shared. Um, I just want to start out by thanking everyone for so many messages and and. Uh, wishing us love over the month of June. Yeah. June was just a crazy month around here. We have Kim, we have Kim Michelle's birthday. Brandon's birthday is the last day of, or 29th of May. And then we go from there to our anniversary, which was 41 this year. Yep. Um, about Kim Michelle's age now, 41. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, from there, we had Father's Day and Sean's birthday on the 14th. Uh, my birthday on the 24th. So it was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Month. And so much love sent our way. It was just really fabulous. So thank you everybody for that. And you may not know how much all those birthday wishes were truly appreciated on the 24th on my birthday. Because just the day before the 23rd, I was scheduled for a colonoscopy. First time. First time. <laughs> kind of a early birthday present. That's right. And uh, following my colonoscopy, it took a while for the doctor to come back in. And when he came back in, I, I'll never forget the words. He just said, we got a problem. <laughs> and then he proceeded to let us know. The way I'll explain it is that I had an unwelcome <laughs> guest in my basement apartment. <laughs> and I was a little concerned about that. So... Um, since the 24th, uh, we've been together through a number of different screenings and biopsies and waiting on approvals from insurance companies. Just a crazy, crazy world. Um, I'm going to let Kim Michelle take it from, from here, kind of give you some of the details. And then at the end, I'm just going to make a couple special requests of you. 
so um, we were ready for to go after this thing, this unwanted guest in the downstairs apartment. <laughs> um, he did have a diagnosis of rectal cancer. Um, and so um, we had a treatment plan for uh, moderate radiation and chemo to reduce the size of the tumor and then go in and surgically remove the tumor and do a resection there and um, take this take care of it in a matter of uh, a few months and then do chemo after the surgery just to make sure that we took care of everything and uh, we met with our oncologist and we're ready with that treatment plan. We were doing a CT and an MRI just to make sure that everything looked good. Um, we were ready to start the next day. Um, and then uh, we got some results on the CT scan that showed that um, that downstairs neighbor was partying up on the liver. And um, so we had some engagement and additional cancer showing in the liver. And uh, in addition to that, we, another MI, MRI was scheduled for the pelvic area and um, some of those partiers had uh, wandered over into the lymph nodes in the liver. And so um, we now have a different treatment plan. Um, we are looking at stage four rectal cancer. And um, as our oncologist said, it's not a curable situation. Um, so everything goes through your mind at that point. And we've had, we've he really- did say I could be salvageable. Well, yeah. So we then <laughs> went to uh, one of the other oncologists that we're working with, that our new one that's gonna work with the radiation for with us. And uh, he, he did say that, you know, um, there's some, not many, and uh, um, he doesn't wanna say that it'll be Scott, but they have had some that um, are not cured, but um, where the patient is salvageable. And uh, <laughs> so, but really that's all we had to hear. He opened that window of possibility and we have jumped straight through uh, into that place of possibility. And so now we have a different strategy. So we are full on chemo and we'll start that and then we'll scan again and uh, see that um, we are kicking those people out that don't belong there, those da those neighbors, those uh, unwanted guests there that don't belong, we'll rescan them and then from that point do targeted radiation and then from that point um, surgery. So that's what we know. What we know is far less than what we don't know. Um, and at the same time, this is a practice for us to step into trusting in that process and uh, engaging the best we can and learning as we go. So there are a lot of things that we don't know. There are things though that we're absolutely certain of. I love you. And that is without a doubt, the one thing we absolutely are certain of is that we're together on this journey. We're absolutely certain that there is a God that uh, is miraculous and powerful. And we are also absolutely certain that we have been gifted with warriors in our life who we know will stand with us and support us in prayer and uh, send us comfort and absolutely um, provide us with whatever they can and that's really what this is about this is about just asking you and whoever you know that may not even know us to on our behalf uh, stand with us in um in a miraculous healing and uh or a ma miraculous journey whatever that whatever that's going to look like um and so the other thing is you know we we have been quiet this month on on uh, Facebook, and that's kind of why. Um, but we want you to know that we love you, and that we um, are anxious for not for what this looks like because we know it's going to be what it's going to be. Uh, not having the answers is a difficult place for me, and uh, uh, I guess that's part of what this practice is going to be. Um, but. We appreciate your support and um, we'll take it. Uh, we'll absolutely take it. 
Well, we don't know how we're going to get through this, but we know we're going to get through this. Yeah. And we're going to make it not a circumstance driven scenario. That's right. But a quality driven scenario. Absolutely. So we are, even though it may not look like it at the moment, in a place of absolute gratitude. Yeah. And joy. Yeah. And enjoying each other more than maybe we ever have. We've cried more, but we've also laughed, laughed more a lot in the last month than we ever have. Yeah. So my final two requests for this video are one, if you're scheduled for any screenings medically, I'm gonna ask that you call your doctor, make an appointment, get in and get those done. And then my second request, um, I hear you, hope you hear my heart in this. If you reach out with messages, what I find sometimes is when I get devastating news about someone, I don't know what to say. And it's like the only words I can find to say are, I'm so sorry. My request is that you not be sorry. And that you not send messages of sorrow because the energy that we need is love, yeah. compassion, joy, um, all those qualities. So, you know, let us know, let me know what you're, let us know what you're grateful for. You know, the blessings we've shared together. Yeah. And the blessings you look forward to us sharing, sharing together that, in the yeah, future. Yeah, well. for sure. Yeah. So I'm not sure who all will see this message. Feel free to share it with anyone that maybe would want to know the news and could join us in Yeah, prayer. and doesn't know us, but believes in the power of prayer and love and support and grace and all of those amazing things. And know that we love you. Yeah. And we'll be talking to you soon. Yes, absolutely. See you soon. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. And we you. love absolutely. Scott. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. 100%. Yeah. Top and bottom. Yeah. For sure. And I know that we feel that. We've... It's just been so humbling, the outpouring of love and support we have received. And um, I think if, if nothing else, that's the one thing I would want to make sure that everyone really knows is that when you feel like you are alone, you are not alone. There is There are so many people out there who want to support you who want to be in your corner who already are who already are they're already there they just may not know what you're going through and I am have not always been great about sharing that part because I think I have pretty broad shoulders and I can carry that load this is a place for me to just be honest and vulnerable and acknowledge that this is a journey that I cannot put on my shoulders and or, or that I choose not to put on my shoulders and um, carry myself. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's no way someone yeah. can carry this burden alone. And, and you're going to be there for Scott, but people will be there for you and Scott. Is, yeah. Of course we are, but you have many friends and family that have already reached out for you. Yeah. And <clears throat> to you yeah. regarding that. Yeah, I mean, I think that original um, little post had like 5,000 views mm -hmm. on it, which was just, I mean, we're, that's unheard of for something we <laughs> kind of just put right. out there, right? Wow. Well, but, um, but we're not meant to even do anything alone. Humans are yeah. social creatures. Social creatures. Yeah. We're meant to be with people, and that bo bolsters our immune system. Yeah. And our motivation to fight and our strength. So. And I think that's the purpose. That's one of the purposes for wanting to share this. And I just thank you both, of course. Um, I, d I don't need to put it out anywhere else to know that I've got this support team sitting right here always and forever. And at the same time, I think that it is so critical for people to know that um, as uncomfortable as it may seem, there are, the world wants to f be in your corner. And it may not always seem that way with the way the world 
what we hear. Right. Right. Yeah. But I believe that our our nature is to be in a place of grace and compassion. And the more we can offer an opportunity for uh, people to show up that way, then inevitably the better we'll make the world. I agree. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Michelle, what would you like to share today about this journey of the last almost two months now? Yeah, so we got the initial diagnosis the end of um, June, and we're now stepping into, uh, we started treatment, we started chemo. Um, I think the, I think being completely honest, the most important thing that I would want people to know is that, one, you're not alone. And if you feel like you are, it's probably because, and I say this with the most love I can think about, that you're choosing to be alone. Um, And the other thing I would say is that it's going to be, it's going to be an opportunity for you to be able to reflect on the areas that are still challenging for you. Um, to accept, for me, and it may not be, any. everybody's journey is different. So for me, receiving support can be a challenge for me because I make it mean all kinds of things about right who or what I am, right? you know, and um, even though I would be the first to step up for somebody else and not think a second thing about it, I think that um, to be in that moment of grace with yourself is, can be one of the most beautiful opportunities you can be given in a situation like this. (laughs) I'm not saying I'm there (laughs) for sure. So I don't want to sugarcoat this in in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I am not saying I'm there, but I absolutely know that um, I'm surrounded by people who will walk me through the journey if I'm willing to go there. And I think Sometimes you get to be pushed to go there. And I would say I'm being pushed. Yeah. Yeah, I think as women and mothers and wives and we try to control all of the elements. Yeah. Because we want to take care of everything and then mm-hmm. we get to a point where when we maybe can't. we can't and then we have all those doubts about our mm-hmm. strength and self. And um, I had a, f- a conversation with a friend this week that said, I said, look, <clears throat> You know, it's okay to not be okay Mm -hmm. around what she was going through. But, yeah, I don't, I mean, this just is a whole other ball game for anything we've ever tried to control. Because there is no control. Right, yeah, because it, there's. And and it's not even, you don't have control over the cancer, but just the process. Even the process, yeah. The insurance, the doctors, the pre-authorizations, all of the things it took uh, from the 24th to... Last week, which was what five six weeks yes. before he had his first cancer for his treatment. first treatment, and yeah, a lot of that treatment. was pre authorization paperwork, and, uh, mm-hmm. going to a third party authorization, which I had no idea even existed within right. my insurance organization, and and really, let's just add in that's something that anyone with a group insurance really should check into. Yeah. Abs- Are, is it yeah. your insurance that mm-hmm. is making decisions or have they um, sent that out to a third party that's not even the insurance company? Yeah. And I I know coming out of this that there'll be a space for me to really be an advocate in that arena because the last thing someone who's dealing with a traumatizing diagnosis like that should should be be having to put their energy or focus on right is calling the insurance company every day saying are we pre-authorized are we pre-authorized are we Mm pre-authorized i mean my doctor shouldn't be calling me 
saying, we're ready to go as soon as your insurance company will preauthorize, and we're doing everything we can on our end, but we are waiting for your preauthorization. I mean, right. the person who is going through that, just that's just not a conversation they should ever, ever have to be in. Or wait on pins and needles. Yeah. To have that decision made yeah. by someone outside of their realm of even expertise. Yeah. Well, even mm-hmm. even knowing. Well, you know, at least yeah. with your doctor, mm-hmm. your doctor tells you. But when your health and fate essentially is put in the hands of someone that's a complete stranger in a complete different state, in a complete different place. I don't understand why there should be a preauthorization for any treatment when there's always been already been a diagnosis. Mm-hmm. What? We have the lab results. Yeah. The doctor said, this is it. This is what we need to go forth. Should that not be trusted? Well, right. that was part of the conversation around, you know, if you... If you have a diagnosis of a tumorous can- uh, cancerous tumor, for example, and now you want to do a CT or an MRI to determine whether or not there has been, um, it's it, whether it's metastasized mm-hmm. or not, because it affects treatment, of course, um, then if you have already had the diagnosis of the cancerous or malignant tumor, then the progression to a CT and MRI, that is a natural progression of that disease. And then if there's something there, the progression to a biopsy, that is a natural progression of the disease. Those should not require additional preauthorization at every single level. And here's the other thing. It takes so long to get the preauthorization, but your, and I, I, I understand it, but they will not put you in for an appointment to even, for example, get the biopsy until they have the preauthorization. So if it takes you seven days to get the preauthorization, then it could be another seven days before they can get you in for the biopsy. So now you're Mm -hmm. 14 days additionally down the treatment road, and I'm thankful for the treatment. So I don't want anyone to hear that I'm not appreciative of all of the opportunities we have in front of us for treatment, because I know that there are are probably plenty of families and plenty of places in the world where those types of treatments are not even available. So this has nothing to do with that. This has to do with a system that does not seem designed to take care of the patient and the family of the patient when a clear diagnosis has been made. Right. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. What what would have happened if you hadn't had insurance? I I can't even. Um, my thought is. Because even with this, right, mm-hmm. our insurance happens to start in end in July and start in August. I'm due for my colonoscopy, which I now have every five years because I had polyps in my previous um, colonoscopy. I have insurance. I know what's going on with my husband and I didn't, I'm, I waited until the new insurance fiscal year, fiscal year mm-hmm. to schedule, um, the next colonoscopy to get it on the next year. So that you can yeah, actually get it covered. So it's deductible. On, exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's right. on, so it is a question about whether you have it or not, but it also is a qu- whether you have it, you're still making medical decisions based on what kind of insurance yeah. you have and when does it start and when does it That's, not start? When is mm-hmm. your deductible start? When is your deductible yeah. paid for? When I mean, yeah, you know, I'm, it's and yeah. I'm up against the same wall mm-hmm. yeah. with physical therapy. Yeah. yeah. A few more months of it, but yet we're in a brand new fiscal year. Yep. And it's tricky. And again, I am not saying that I am not thankful because I know there. that there yeah. are many people who don't have coverage. So hopefully you have sought it out under recent policy positions how, who, that have pretty much guaranteed coverage. That being said, it doesn't mean that there isn't an opportunity 
to step back and look at the system that we have and say, okay, are there some inherent places within the system that the system is broken? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Can Michelle tell us how um, your family's doing right now? You know, I just, I feel so um, blessed and grateful. And um, we have our children put together a GoFundMe, which is um, just so beautiful. Our oldest son initiated that and all the kids came together around that. Um, And they're all dealing with it as they're going to deal with it, right? Um, It's a difficult, it's a difficult process to think about, you know, what that future looks like, even as we are committed to a positive outcome in the future. Um, I lost my dad uh, in January and I can't even imagine myself in the, younger. Yeah, younger years. I, I mean, mm-hmm. it's still traumatizing to me, and I'm this many years older than my children, you know? Right. So um, I, um, I think that they're, they're amazing, amazing young people. And I am blessed at, around how they've all chosen to step up in the process and I know they have pain that they have not chosen to share with us because I'm sure that they think that they're protecting protecting us you you know um but they don't need to protect us we're you know we want to be there to support them and um I do have to just uh it's you know Scott, for those of you who don't, I mean, he's been on our podcast a couple of times, and if you didn't hear him on those, I would encourage you to go back and find him because he's just amazing. Well, he's so smart and so positive. Yeah. And, yeah, I love I love yeah. listening to him He's talk. so funny. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, I would encourage you to – to find a space maybe to get to know him. And even if you don't just send him a message, he'll like reply and you'll be best friends before you even know it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, at the same time, it's just a new, it's a, it's a new space for all of us to be in. And, uh, and at the same time, even though we've had many tears, like we said on the video, we've also had, A lot of laughs. I mean, really, a lot, a lot of really very special times that um, I think that we've always had in our relationship, but somehow they mean that much more now. And uh, that will be the opportunity moving forward once we're past this is that we don't have to repeat this to uh, really... Hold on to those moments. Yeah. 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 You know, there's always going to be, I don't, if you've been together with your partner for any amount of time, I'm sure Scott would probably not say this because he's too gracious, but I mean, he tells me I'm beautiful every day. He tells me he loves me every single day. There may be, he, he wouldn't tell you there may be, Days when he's like, oh, I don't really like this that much about her. <laughs> he's probably afraid about, you know, I might hurt him, which, honey, I I wouldn't. I, it might sting for a minute, but it wouldn't hurt that long. Um, but I think it also is a moment to just say, gosh, some of that stuff that you think matters so much in the moment that is bugging you. It's probably going to bug you if you were with anybody else. Because let's face it, you're with you. Right. And that may be the part that bugs you the most. Right. Um, but there, and there are things in that relationship that are the best of what you could possibly ever want. Mm-hmm. It's just, what are you looking for? 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I know um, from my point of view, I've watched both of you deal with pretty traumatic events over the last six months. And you two are super strong, strongest women I know. And one of the things that I know about you is you're having your own stuff, but you care so much about other people that you're still caring for so many people and you're still caring for so many people and you're getting your class classes <laughs> put together and you're calling on this person and this person and this person and making sure they're okay and you're still making sure I'm okay and I'm fine. <laughs> but and you're still taking care of your kids' emotional um, stages, and you're still taking care of your family and then your own kids and all of that that's going on. And just another little wrench today with your... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I just look back at awe with all of the things that you guys keep shouldering. And well, I, your I'm shoulders he, are pretty damn it. big. I'm here for it. Your shoulders yeah. are pretty damn big too, Patricia. Yeah, there's no doubt. I learned about from that. the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here here's what I know. Pain is pain. So it, it doesn't your what's going on for you doesn't have to look like what's going on for me. Uh, it's relative. what's going on for you is painful. Pain is pain. There's no measurement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just, you know, uh, as much as anything, this is this is also just a shout out to find your tribe, find your people, find your warriors, because they're there. They're there. And it might not always seem like that, but they are ready for battle. They're ready to stand up. They're ready to um, be called upon. Um, and so don't don't hesitate to call upon them because they want to serve. I know mm -hmm. I want to serve even in this moment because in that space, when I can show grace, then I know that I will receive grace. Not that that's my motivation for when I do it, mm -hmm. but energetically, you're mm -hmm. just operating in that space so you inevitably will receive it. I, I'm my best self when I am busy Mm -hmm. And if I'm not busy in my own life, but I can be busy helping purpose. someone else having yeah. a purpose. Oh, I can yeah. I can do this or whatever it is. Help somebody, whatever. I, I know that I get so much out of that. And so one of the things that Scott said in our Facebook post right here was that um, that Kim Michelle and I know Jill and, and I are the same way, too. But if you were asking someone, how could I help you? And they said. Oh, you can't. You would be devastated. Yeah. Yeah. We want to help. Yeah. Everyone wants yeah. to help. And with that in mind, let's talk about how people can help you. You're the um, breadwinner right now. Yeah. And medical costs are, uh, uh, we don't even know what that's yeah. going to be yeah. like. We don't Scott's, know that. And Scott's, Scott's new full time job Scott's is. Scott's yes. full time job is. Healing um, and fighting mm -hmm. and yeah. digging in. Digging yep. in. Yep. Yep. That is his full time job. Um, so, um, we do have the GoFundMe, um, mm -hmm. for anybody who feels led to that. Sean, can you, did we send that to you? Can you post that? Um, we will, we'll post it. We okay. can post it. Um, because such a very special way to show your support, even if you're not near or it's something that you can do when you feel like you can't do anything to fix something. I just am a firm believer that, you know, if we can do anything, it, it, it just, we should do it. Yeah. And I know for you, Kim Michelle, that this is one of the most difficult parts of all of this mm -hmm. because you are a doer. Yeah. And I think that recognizing that, it's your turn to be on the receiving end is a journey for you. Mm -hmm. And of course we want to remind you of how much you are constantly doing and loving on other people too. Aww. So this is one way that all of us that know and love you can do that. Even if we're not right in your face doing that. Yeah. I appreciate that. I really do. And uh, like I said, it, 
it's so humbling um, and so appreciated. So uh, I hope everyone hears that. Yeah, um, they do. They yeah. Do. You can also Venmo. Um, Scott has a Venmo. I have a, a Venmo. Um, my Venmo is a little tricky because my name is tricky. So right. <laughs> uh, it is Kim Michelle. It is K I M hyphen, hyphen lowercase m in Michelle. M I C H E L L E. And then pull in. And after 20 plus years, I still do capital Michelle. I, I yeah. Because I'm an English too. teacher. I yeah. do too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I always have to check is it A N or E N on Poland? And it's Poland, A N. A N. Um, Which leads us to. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk so, about these great yeah. um, warrior bracelets yeah, that you so guys have. This is um, another uh, way that you can support us. So whether or not you, however you're choosing to support, whether that's with prayers, whether that is with um, reposting, whether that is getting the word out, whether that's serving someone in your community in Scott's name, uh, whatever that might look like, uh, whether it is simply wearing this wristband, then um, this we wristband. want, yes, then we want to honor that. So we are we have these wristbands if you're with us on the live cast you can see them uh, and we'll probably post a picture of them maybe in the a great day to talk so you they chat so that you can see them as well uh, they're multicolored because if you know scott he <laughs> uh, is known for his very colorful shirts he, he loves, doesn't fit in with oh, our black thank and white you and very much uh, <laughs> thank you sean he, I tend to wear black a lot, although he's grown me out of that, and I wear more color now. But um, he is all about mixing colors, which I really have not gone there unless it's a <laughs> jazz jersey. But um, so these are pretty colorful in his honor. They're silicone, silicone wristbands, um, and they say pulling through. T H R O U G H and through T H R U. And anyone, anyone who wants to stand as a warrior with us, uh, we want to welcome you to the Pullen Tribe. And all you have to do is email us or message us on Messenger, or you can even respond to the post here on A Great Day to Talk um, with your email address. And um, we will send you a wristband. The only thing that we're asking is that you wear them um, and that you become a warrior with us and stand on this battlefield. Um, and that you evict those <laughs> friends and neighbors downstairs. Yeah. I'm interrupting because I want to also say that one of the things you guys mentioned was take, if you feel it, take a picture yeah. Of you wearing your wristband or even just your wrist with your band yeah. on. Post it on our Facebook page. Post it on um, and all your Kim social Michelle's. media, yep. Yep. wherever. Yeah. Hashtag pulling through and, and through, through because Scott and Kim Michelle are going to do the, just exactly that. Yeah. Pull through and through. Yeah. And that's what pulling through and through means. Pulling through, obviously, because that's what we're going to do. We're pulling through this particular uh, pit stop in um, our life together. Uh, Scott was really clear that he also wanted and through because we're also uh, going on through. Moving through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moving through to the next great adventure in our life, whatever that might be. So that is why it is pulling through and through. The other reason it's pulling through and through is because um, if you know Scott, then the qualities that he really stands in are grace and compassion and humor and integrity, integrity and uh, kindness, he's wise and kind. And yes, funny, funny and. Damn tall. Yes, very, very tall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and uh, so 
um, he is a pull in through and through because he stands in those qualities, even in the most challenging of times. So the other reference to through and through is that when you wear this, that's what you get to do is you get to stand in whatever those qualities are for you. You stand in them through and through. Um, and so that's what that wristband yep, is it. signifying. Yeah. I love it. And it's so it's on point. Yeah. I, I'm just thrilled with that. I'm, I'm, um, thrilled with the response that we've been that we've received around that that how many people are uh, joining us uh, joining our tribe and willing to wear those um, until this we're through uh, this eviction process yeah mm -hmm. and on to the next great adventure and uh, so I I hope that in this process you hear that it's okay to feel challenged in what life circumstance might be presented to you. It's okay to say, I wouldn't have wished this on for me or my family or, well, you know, anyone. yeah. I mean, I'm um, a cancer survivor myself. I have always said I never wanted to um, ask and embrace that again, but I also would not want to give back who I became in the process of going through my breast cancer because it showed me that I was stronger than I uh, thought I was and that I was braver than I knew I could be. I just didn't know that I, when I said that, and I said it on the podcast probably a year and a half ago, I just didn't know that I was going to be given an opportunity so quickly to step back into that bravery. But I know I can because I've already been there before. Um, but it's okay to be like, gosh, dang it. What the hell? Yeah, this sucks. Mm -hmm. And also say... And what next? Mm -hmm. Because that's the only possible place that there's forward movement for you. And that, for those of you who are in whatever your struggle is, whatever that might be, this, wear this wristband and know that it speaks to you into your life for the reasons why we chose it into our life. It can speak to you for your reasons and speak into our life for our reasons too. And so that's probably what I would want to leave with yeah. my dear sweet friends here. We love you and we yeah. love Scott. We love you and your family and your kids and we're here for it. Yeah. We're here for pulling through. And pulling through. through and through. And Scott, I'd sing the song for you, but I don't know. I don't know it either. I was it's trying always to think of look, look on, on the bright side, side of life. <gasps> Ba -doom, ba -doom, That's ba -doom, on his playlist when he goes to chemo, and oh. he actually said at my funeral when that happens, like years ten years, and years twenty years, and years 50 from years, now, ninety years. He wants to make sure that that is sung at his funeral. So, oh my gosh, oh, Jill, you knew it. Well, he posted. Always he said, "How about a chorus on the bright side of life?" Na 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 na. Hey, hey. <laughs> that's it. That's uh, that's. But That's all I Scott, got. What a rest of the lyrics. Scott, you're going to have to post some features. lyrics. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. sing it. Thanks for listening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, please everyone. Some, please share our message yep. today. Yep. Thank you. Send us if you want a wristband. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you, too. Thanks for listening to It's a Great Day to Talk. Be sure to follow and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast platform. And until next week, get out there and talk. This has been a production from A Podcast Studio.